This lesson was prepared by Blake Liberati and Sam Drerup as part of the National Science Foundation supported Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom, or BOOKS. The first part of this lesson covers some of the different types of water quality parameters used in routine water quality monitoring. The second part of this lesson covers the history of water quality monitoring and the water quality index. This lesson is to be presented in conjunction with hands-on lab activities provided with this lesson and the virtual boat game available at the App Store. The physical properties that are routinely measured to assess water quality are temperature and turbidity, or how clear the water is. Temperature is a measure of how cool or warm the water body is. The typical range of surface water temperatures during the summer sampling season is 18 to 24 degrees Celsius. The most likely source of thermal pollution is through power plant discharge. Rapid fluctuations in temperature can be harmful to most aquatic organisms and make fish more susceptible to disease. Turbidity is a measure of how transparent the water is measured as a depth in centimeters or meters. The clearer the stream or lake is, typically the more healthy it is. Turbidity increases due to suspended solids such as soil that is washed into the water body. Deforestation, construction, and agricultural can cause increases in turbidity. Another source of increased turbidity or de decreased transparency is algal growth. Algal biomass caused by nutrient enrichment negatively impact water transparency. Another method of measuring turbidity is using nephelometric turbidity units, or NTUs. The normal range for a clean stream is 1 NTU. A muddy river can get as high as 10 NTU. The chemical properties that are routinely measured to assess water quality are pH, dissolved oxygen, nitrates, and phosphates. pH is a measure of water acidity or alkalinity using the concentration of hydrogen ions. Preferred range of pH for a healthy aquatic system is 6.5 to 8. Some organisms can survive in a pH as low as 4.5 and as high as 10. There are many causes of increased acidity. The two most common in the eastern United States are acid mine drainage and acid rain. Dissolved oxygen. Aquatic organisms are dependent on dissolved oxygen in the water. Typical dissolved oxygen levels in water is 2 to 14 milligrams per liter and fluctuates over the course of the day due to photosynthesis occurring in the stream. Reductions of dissolved oxygen occurs due to an increase in temperature, increase in organic matter decomposition caused by algal blooms. Many sensitive species of fish, such as trout and salmon, can only survive in an environment with high dissolved oxygen concentrations. Nitrates are fertilizer used by plants for growth. Typically, nitrates are below 1 mg per liter, but can reach levels as high as 30 mg per liter. Excess nitrates are potentially harmful to humans and may lead to fish kills. Usually, nitrate levels peak in early spring due to snowmelt and runoff, and can come from wastewater treatment facilities, leaky septic systems, or agricultural fields. Phosphates are also a type of fertilizer used by plants. Phosphate levels are typically below 0.01 mg per liter, and excess phosphates stimulate algal growth, which result in fish kills. The most common sources of phosphorus pollution are wastewater treatment facilities, decaying organic material, and agricultural runoff. Too much of these nutrients can cause algal blooms. As algae levels increase, the amount of respiration also increases due to decomposition of the algal material. As this decomposition occurs, DO levels decrease. As DO levels decrease, the amount of oxygen available for fish re is reduced, causing fish kills. Biological properties that are routinely measured to assess water quality are E. coli and fecal chloroform concentration. Although generally harmless, the presence of these bacteria in a body of water suggests contamination from animal or human waste and demonstrate the potential for pathogen transfer to people consuming the water or using the water for recreation. The water quality index includes the parameters we have just discussed and a few others to assign a grade to the body of water of interest. This is the process used by the state of Ohio to monitor the quality and health of aquatic systems. Water is essential to life. Humans depend on water for direct consumption, food production, and industry, such as the shipment of goods. The Cuyahoga River is one of the most widely known and extreme examples of a water pollution resulting from human activity. The Cuyahoga is one of the most polluted water bodies in the world. Flammable chemicals and garbage would be put directly into the river from indus industrial activities in the area. These chemicals would float on the surface of the water and sometimes ignite. This river caught fire at least 14 times, with the last event occurring in 1969. This burning river helped establish the Environmental Protection Agency and helped pass the Clean Water Act. 
Although dramatic improvements have been made to the quality of the Cuyahoga River, it is still considered to be polluted due to the large amount of urban runoff, non-point source pollution, combination sewer overflows, and stagnation of water due to impoundment of dams. The Environmental Protection Agency classified portions of the Cuyahoga River watershed as one of the 43 Great Lakes areas of concern. Slide 14. Sources of pollution are industrial waste, runoff from fertilizers and pesticides, and stormwater runoff. Industrial pollution is highly regulated and considered a point source pollution. Runoff from farms and cities is considered non-point source pollution and is not well regulated. There have been numerous local, state, and federal regulations that have increased the quality of surface waters in the United States. The Clean Water Act was enacted in 1972 and has since been amended. This act of Congress provided standards for allowable pollutants and a permitting process that reduces the impacts of industry on surface water. This act also provides funds to cover monitoring and enforcement costs. The Clean Water Act has been successful in protecting and restoring waterways in the United States. In the 1970s, only one-third of all U.S. waterways were considered safe to be used by humans. Since then, in the passing of the Clean Water Act, that number has increased to two-thirds of all waters being considered considered fishable, swimmable, due to the regulations. The WQI incorporates chemical, physical, and biological characteristics of water. It is used to assess the quality of water in terms of health of the ecosystem, safety of human contact, and the quality of drinking water. The WQI weighs the various measure parameters and assigns a score of the waterway that is easily understood by everyone, regardless of background. To calculate the WQI score for a water sample, Take the result of one of your measured parameters, and then use the tables to find the corresponding Q value. For instance, if we had a transparency of 25 centimeters, our Q value would be 53. And multiply the Q value by the weighting factor for that parameter. Once the weighted Q value for each of the measured parameters are calculated, add the values together. The sum of these values should be 0 to 100, indicating the quality of the water body you tested. We will continue this lesson by calculating the water quality index score for a sample of water provided by your teacher. In this lab, we will measure six water quality parameters. Once you have experience using the WQI, play the fish kill game as part of the virtual boat available at the App Store. This game will allow you to see how different sources of pollution impact water quality index parameters along the Ohio River. Play the fish kill game and calculate the WQI score for each site in the fish kill game.